everybody. Welcome to the technical analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get started, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Just pausing briefly to make sure uh, I see people are still entering the uh, webinar room, so I'll give it a minute. Uh, and go ahead and type OK if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Okay, great. Looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, feel free to let me know. Uh, and as always, keep in mind that there's risk involved with each trade that you take. I think we all understand that we should manage risk in one way or another uh, in a way that makes sense for your risk tolerance and your balance size, etc. And we'll go over some uh, extra tools in that regard that are found in our Web Trader and our Avatrade Go mobile app uh, as we carry out some different strategies today. Uh, we'll make use of the, the risk management tools as well uh, as we set up trades and such so you can get a feel for uh, how you can manage risk a bit easier using the Web Trader and Avatrade Go app. And also keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now, real quick, uh, for anyone who's brand new to things, uh, what is technical analysis? Basically, uh, it's looking at the, the charts. Typically, it's a candlestick chart. is the type of chart uh, that traders are using. And uh, we're looking back at the past price movements on the charts and looking for patterns uh, or price levels that maybe lend some predictability uh, to future movements. Maybe you find uh, areas where between certain prices, uh, the price tends to range up and down. Uh, maybe you find prices that you see in the past, if it's broken above or below, that, that then it establishes momentum in that direction, uh, and all kinds of different patterns and things like that that you can look for uh, within your technical analysis strategies. And indicators are part of that. They can assist you with uh, letting you know when the indicator thinks the movement is overbought or oversold, uh, that sort of thing. And so uh, we tend to lean on the manual methods of technical analysis within my webinars because uh, it teaches you to read on your own what the indicator is looking at. And actually, you can be smarter than the indicator uh, because you can take into account the, the current fundamental news situation as well. And you know, adding the indicator in as part of your decision making makes sense. Uh, but leaning on it uh, by itself maybe does not. But you know, e each trader has their own uh, weight that they may give or, or not to, to different indicators as part of their technical analysis strategy. If you have any questions, you want to give any input as we go along, uh, feel free to do so at any time. Now, from our main website, we can log into the web trader uh, right up here in the upper right. Uh, for those of you who, who are uh, used to the MetaTrader platforms and apps, uh, both the MT4 platform and the MT5 platform uh, can be used on our web trader and our Avatrade Go mobile app. So, and you can switch between them uh, very easily within our platform and app. So it simplifies things. Uh, and, and also you can use live accounts and demo accounts as well. So you can kind of do all your trading from one place, but with advanced functionality that's not there on the MetaTrader platforms. Now, if you tend to trade from mobile, you can have the same tools and advanced functionality that our web trader has by using the Avatrade Go mobile app, which is found in the major app stores. You can also follow the links uh, from here on our website to, to get to the, the app in the major app stores, just following these links here. And so you'll see it as the same look, feel, and functionality as our web trader. And we're about to use the web trader now. So in the upper right corner, if you click log in, then you uh, enter your email address and password, and you'll be in our web trader platform, which looks like this. Now, uh, today, in terms of fundamentals, there's a lot of anticipation as to what the numbers later in the week will be tomorrow and Thursday with a lot of data coming out, uh, and especially the, the CPI data, the, the inflationary data out of the U.S., uh, which is coming later this week. There's a lot of focus on that to try and determine, uh, you know, are things slowing down more than expected still in the U.S.? And if so, uh, you know, what's the likelihood that the U.S. will lower interest rates uh, sometime soon? which the markets are, I think, hoping for, that that would happen and uh, makes 
makes things easier on, on Wall Street and the major indices around the world. If interest rates are lower, uh, making, making people have more buying power uh, for a lot of things. But you know, the, the feds in the US and you know, those making monetary decisions really all around the world, they can't lower interest rates back down too quickly. Uh, you know, they were raised to try and bring inflation down. And if you lower interest rates too quickly, it'll go back up uh, maybe faster than you want it to or more than you want it to. And so uh, they're trying to walk a tightrope here. And, you know, today there's been a lot of anticipation waiting to see what those numbers will be uh, in the coming days. And so we see maybe some support levels holding, some resistance levels holding, some movements that uh, maybe are a bit predictable today. And uh, if we can line up maybe some of the signals coming in from Trading Central, which show technical analysis, support resistance levels, et cetera, with what we find with our own eye on the chart and, and with what we understand the fundamental news situation to be, uh, which is kind of anticipation of data yet to come. So not a lot of momentum today so far to break big price levels then we kind of have our idea of what our strategy will be as we look at the technical analysis. Maybe to trust some support and resistance levels, uh, to go with signals that look like opportunistic entry points that fit that idea, uh, kind of going through our checklist to see if things line up for us. And so we can walk through that idea, uh, those ideas right now. And crude oil happens to be on the chart, so we can take a look at crude oil and see, uh, first of all, let's see if there's a signal, there is. Uh, let's see what the signal says. I, I anticipate a buy, uh, and it is, because the U.S. dollar's been a bit weak today, so it makes sense, you know, the euro would be climbing against it, crude oil would be climbing against uh, maybe the, the U.S. dollar, maybe gold, etc. the major indices as well that are paired against the USD. So I see here crude oil, there's indeed is a signal to buy. It looks like it's bounced uh, a bit already, but let's take a look at the chart ourselves and, and see what we see on, on the candlesticks. And so uh, this is a line I drew a while back and as a resistance line, and that still has not been broken above. We see this was support back here where the price hit and bounced up, hit and bounced up. It, for anyone who's new to that, uh, support level means a price where when the, when the price drops, to that level, it has trouble breaking below it and tends to bounce back up. And so we see that here that was occurring uh, in the past, okay? And this goes, goes back a number of days and even weeks. And so then we see once that price level was broken here that, and this is typical support and resistance theory, and many times it holds true, that once a support level is broken here, then that broken support becomes resistance like it did here. Resistance, resistance, and down it went further. And, and the idea behind that, the rationale behind that phenomenon, why would a broken support level then become resistance? Well, it's because whatever news fundamentally caused this support level to break and caused crude oil to break below that price level, well, that news then still existed a short while later, and so held it below that price. And so whatever caused it to break the support level then causes that support level to be resistance until the news changes, right? And eventually the news changes. And so we see broken support here becoming resistance and the movement continuing down after it broke the support. That's many times what you see uh, with broken support levels. And the opposite, if it breaks back above the price level, whatever good news made it break above, then carries it many times some distance further above, okay? And so uh, if we bring ourselves to today over here, we see that indeed this price is still acting after going above it for a short period a few days back. This is acting as resistance here, resistance here, resistance again here, it keeps pushing the price back down. Currently, we find ourselves a good distance below that resistance level, okay? So there is room to climb from a technical perspective before it would reach this resistance up around 74 and a quarter, okay? Remember, this resistance 
was this broken support same price level from the past support 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 broken below resistance resistance and we didn't reach the resistance yet so when i look at this signal and i say okay the analysts at trading central say buy and they say you could take profit maybe up around between 73 and a quarter and 7420 or 74 and a quarter almost that fits the technical analysis we just did okay and this is how i like to evaluate the technical signals when i look at them rather than blindly following them i also would like to understand myself well why are they saying to buy on this why are they saying take profit maybe around 7420 or a little lower and so when i look at the chart i can see why they're saying you might take profit around 7420. I drew my line at 7423 last week, okay? Because of this old support level. And so you see how it all comes back around the technical analysis into this signal, that same price level that I drew a line on a couple weeks back, a week or more back, okay? So uh, technically I agree, this could climb. Okay, then I have to think fundamentally, do I feel like uh, the US dollar could give more ground to crude oil? And the fact that uh, in the coming day or two, there's an anticipation that maybe the inflationary data, the, 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 the CPI data out of the US and other data coming in could show an economic slowdown resulting in a more likely lowering of interest rates in the US. It makes sense that the US dollar might be weakening right now. If the anticipation is, hey, that could be some pretty bad data coming later in the week, uh, then it makes sense that there's anticipation the USD could weaken. Okay, and so that seems to, to be the feel today. Now we don't know for sure what will that data be in the coming days, but we don't have to know for sure. We just can see what the trend is right now and what the signal is based on the anticipation of what it could be. Okay, uh, you know sometimes the uh, the, the saying is trade on rumor and uh, get out of your trade on fact. Uh, and you know sometimes the, the movements come before the actual information comes out is what that means. Okay, uh, in this this case it would be buy on rumor and then as it gets closer to the announcement, if you're near the resistance level, sell on the fact. Okay, so, but uh, I, I'm not here to tell you you have to buy on this, but the signal says buy from Trading Central. The technical analysis shows we don't reach the resistance level for another almost couple dollars up, a little less than $2. So there's room still for this to climb, technically speaking. And if fundamentally it makes sense to you, uh, then it's a move that, that you might do, okay? So let's say we were taking this trade and we were gonna follow this signal uh, to buy. So now I'm looking, where do I want my take profit? And you know it pre-programmed it at 73 and a quarter. That makes sense to me because that's the resistance level. And maybe I put it just a little lower, like 73.20, so it doesn't actually have to try and break the resistance. I would take my profit just before the resistance, which would be if I pull this line down, right about here, 73.20, 70, or yeah, 73.20. Let me bring that down a little. That's actually a bit earlier than I want, not 73.20, I want 74.20. I'm glad I was uh, adjusting this. So 74.20, the resistance is up here, 74.20. So let's go just before that at 73.90, just before 74, maybe 73.95, okay? So up here is the resistance. And we've got plenty of room to, to climb to get there. So take profit on a buy, 73.95. And again, this is more of an art than a science, right? I don't have to uh, have my uh, take profit exactly at 73.95, even if you're thinking the same thing. And so uh, I'm putting it about there because that's just before the resistance line that I drew from a, a week or two back, okay? Uh, Yulia, yes, for sure, we can look at the S&P 500 uh, at some point here. All right, so take profit 73.95, just before the resistance up here around even 74, uh, we can see the resistance. Remember, the signal was showing maybe a little uh, sooner than that, 
uh, but somewhere up near this resistance level in the signal. And so I use the signal as part of my strategy, right? I don't have to follow the exact price levels they're recommending. I don't always have to follow the directionality either. And in this case, I am because the rest of everything kind of lines up with that from, from the way I see it. And so uh, now we have to say, well, where would my stop loss be? If I do a live move right now, I have to decide where would I give up if it reverses the wrong way. And for that, I'm going to go to smaller candles, go to one hour candles. And I can see that, you know, if this drops below this low point here, then certainly the momentum has changed, right? So if, if this drops below this low point of today, this little support level where this pulled back and bounced, if this comes all the way back down below this level, then the momentum certainly has changed. It becomes a downtrend in my mind. And in that case, then I would say, okay, I'll, I'll take the loss. I'll get out at that point and accept I was wrong. So if it drops below 71.38, so let's say 71.30 is my stop loss, okay? So now I look and I say, okay, I have a larger potential profit than possible loss. So it's an opportunistic entry point from that regard. The risk side of things is a bit smaller than the potential profit. doesn't always work out that way, but that's where my support and resistance levels are. So I have a larger potential profit to take profit before the resistance and a less less risk to get my stop loss below that support level, okay? Uh, now I have to look at my trade size. Now that I've got my directionality based on the fundamental news and the signal and our technical analysis, and the technical analysis helped determine our stop loss price and our take profit price, now I have to adjust the trade size for that setup because maybe I don't wanna risk 7,150. Maybe I want to risk something less than that. So now I need to adjust the trade size down until I'm at the risk level that's appropriate for me. And maybe you need to adjust the trade size up. It depends on your balance size, right? And your risk tolerance. So if I go to one lot, how much am I risking? And this is where our web trader platform and our app really helps with risk management because it calculates everything for you. With one lot, with this technical setup, I'm risking 1140 okay I uh, maybe I only want to risk 500 so if I say 0 0.4 for a trade size now I'm risking 456 maybe 0 0.45 and now I'm right at almost 500 495 risk to make over 700 okay and, and that's changing as as time goes by because the the live price is moving but it's right around 500, a little less, a little over 700 profit. If I like that setup and risk uh, level, then I buy, okay? And so uh, I have an opportunistic pullback here from where it was an hour ago, and I'm still in the direction of the signal to buy. So it's actually a better entry than I would have had an hour ago. Uh, that's what you might call an opportunistic entry point, if indeed you think it'll keep going up. Now, I'm not here to say it will keep going up, but this is the sort of routine that makes sense to follow as you are trading a strategy rather than uh, just you blindly using one tool. Like the, the crude oil signal said buy, you don't have to just blindly follow that. Do your own technical analysis like we did. See if you like the entry point. See what the risk and potential profit is. And also think about the fundamental news and if that works in your favor. If in one hour from now, the CPI data was coming out, I probably wouldn't be buying on this right now because it's too close to that data release to where, what if, it, what if the data came out and worked against me and this goes flying in the wrong direction? So uh, the fact that I know there's a lot of time between now and that data coming out, uh, the anticipation of what, that data could be seems to be working in our favor from now until then. At least for now, it's working in our favor. That's the, the, the trend that's been happening today, okay? And so this is kind of how you can use your technical analysis while also considering what's the timing of the next fundamental news that we know is scheduled, okay? Now, uh, there was a request for the S&P 500, so looks, let's look at that. I anticipate probably it's climbing, and there's probably, if there's a signal on it, it's probably a signal that it would go up because that's kind of the sentiment today. So 
I, what are we on? One hour candles. Indeed, I see it spiked up over the last few hours. Uh, let's see, is there a signal? There is. Let's see what the signal is. It's a buy signal. It actually already reached the take profit price. Okay, so this one we're late on in terms of buying on the signal. We see it says right here the market has already reached a key level. Okay, so earlier today it was obvious that the sentiment was somewhat positive and the U.S. dollar was weakening. Uh, so uh, you could have you could have already traded on this one, and the signal was out a while ago. So uh, you easily could have already made a move. It you see it hit this first. Uh, resistance level, which was the first take profit level suggestion. It did not yet reach the second take profit level. Uh, they always give you two options, ones that, one that's closer and one that's further away. Perhaps it keeps climbing. The momentum, the sentiment is in favor that this could keep climbing. For me, this doesn't meet my checklist now. My checklist is I already thought I wanted to buy. So I want to find if there's a signal that also says to buy. Okay, the signal says buy. So, so far I'm two for two on my checklist of my strategy as to whether I will buy. The third thing on my checklist is when I do the technical analysis, I want it to be an opportunistic entry point, meaning it hasn't yet reached the resistance level above. In this case, it has. It's right on the resistance and actually looks like it, it's starting to push down a little bit. So, uh, this one doesn't meet my checklist that I... Uh, I want to make a move on this right now. You might say, well, why not sell? It's at the resistance level. You see here, last time it hit this resistance. And again, here's the example that I gave you. When the support level breaks, a lot of times then it becomes resistance. If you look back here in the one hour candles, when this broke this price level with a big red breakthrough candle, whatever news caused the US 500 to drop through that price level held it below and it became resistance right here, okay? Same thing here, it reached that price and it was resistance had dropped. Same thing again, it hit that price and it's having trouble breaking it. Now it doesn't mean it won't break it, it might. Depends how positive this momentum is. If it does break this price level, it could rise right up to the second one. And that's what this signal is telling you, okay? But for me, I would rather have saw it a few hours back when it was closer to the pivot line down here and had a more opportunistic setup where my, my take profit could have been uh, much further distance than my stop loss would be below this support level, below the pivot level. Right now, if I bought, I would, I would probably have to put my stop loss way down here below the support level, and my take profit would be a much shorter distance to this resistance level up here. So I'd be risking three or four times what my potential profit would be. Not that you can't make a move like that, but that doesn't fit my checklist, right? It can fit others. You might still decide to make a move on this with this signal. For me, uh, it doesn't fit my checklist. And why would I not sell? Because the fundamental news seems to be working against selling right now, even though it's an opportunistic entry point from a technical perspective. So a purely technical trader would probably sell right now because it reached the resistance level that's been there since days ago, okay, and uh, and it's pushing down. So you could probably scalp a quick profit with it dropping off this resistance. The question is how far will it drop if the momentum is still up? And I never like to trade against the momentum, against the sentiment, and the sentiment has been positive today. So certainly you could catch a pullback, and it looks like it's already pulling back, uh, which is why I didn't say I would buy on this, uh, because it already reached the resistance and could pull back, which is what it's doing. Uh, but the pullback, I'm not certain in my mind that I would make a move on the sell aspect because the sentiment is in the opposite direction, okay? So that's an example of using your checklist of what your rules are for your trading strategy and not just going with one tool, like a signal that says buy, but putting it through your checklist within your strategy that does it agree with most or all of your rules. And in this case, it doesn't agree with all of my rules. So that's why I wouldn't buy on this. And there you see, if we had, we'd already be in the negative. It's already starting off uh, with momentum the wrong way because it was at the resistance level at the time we looked at it. 
okay? So this is how you can selectively look at the signals and pick the ones that are right for you. Not every signal, you're not looking at all of them at the right time or at the right price to be opportunistic for that signal, okay? All right, so I'm glad we found an example that was not at a spot maybe where it was opportunistic, where, where the first example we looked at was a bit more opportunistic. The, the crude oil setup looked better than this one. And, uh, and indeed, this is pulling back. Now, if this pulls back clear towards the support level, you could start to think about, okay, maybe I take a shot at this then. But uh, you have to be careful. Once it reaches the price and starts dropping, you want to see if it bottoms out and starts to maybe trend up again uh, because you don't know how far it might drop, okay? All right, so uh, we can look at some other categories as well. What's interesting, uh, you know, if you live in a region where you can trade cryptocurrencies, I know like in the UK, uh, we can't offer cryptocurrencies, uh, but in a lot of areas we can. The Crypto 10 Index takes the top 10 uh, cryptocurrencies uh, by trading volume and, and puts them into an index, okay? And so, you know, what's happening fundamentally right now with cryptocurrencies has been pretty easy to read. Uh, it's expected that maybe by tomorrow, the SEC, which is the, the group in the U.S. that decides uh, rules a, a, about trading, uh, Security and Exchange Commission in the U.S. might approve Bitcoin ETFs to be traded like on NASDAQ, like for, for real hedge fund trading and not, not just being traded, uh, you know, uh, it, using crypto wallets. And so uh, there's a lot of excitement in the crypto market that maybe this time the SEC will approve one or maybe many that have applied uh, Bitcoin ETFs, electronically traded funds. To be, to be used by, you know, professional hedge fund traders and, uh, and the alike. And so this would add maybe a layer of legitimacy to cryptocurrency in general in many people's minds, not just with Bitcoin, and has created some bullish movements with a lot of coins of late. Now, there's been a bit of a pullback today in a number of coins. We can see on the Crypto 10 Index this pullback after a very strong rise. Okay, that's on the one hour candles where we see it climbing strongly and then a pullback. Okay, and maybe we look at the larger candles, we can look at four hour candles, and we see in the bigger picture on four hour candles, look at the climb. It's been known that the SEC is working on a decision for the, for the past weeks and even months that this was leading up to maybe tomorrow being the, the day that it's decided uh, whether. The, the ETFs will be approved or not for, for uh, Bitcoin trading. Now, if we go down to one day candles, we can see the climb. Look at this climb. This has been leading up in anticipation to this moment coming maybe tomorrow, all right? Uh, so what looked like a downtrend when we looked at the one hour candles, when we look at the one day candles is actually, it's just a small pullback in a much larger uptrend that has been occurring. OK, uh, and Bitcoin really has been leading the way uh, with this charge up of the, the crypto 10 index. Now. Now we can look at the smaller picture, right? Go back to the 30 minute candles and we say, OK, what support level is there? If you want, if you're thinking, OK, positive momentum, maybe they'll approve this, these ETFs tomorrow. Uh, the SEC might out of the US and that could cause a surge up further, maybe. Perhaps, there's no guarantee, so you want to risk manage the trade, but uh, maybe you think it won't be approved and you want to sell. That's okay, too. Uh, I'm not here to tell you what you should do on this, but just to let you know there's a potential large momentum coming uh, with this decision perhaps coming down tomorrow. Now, uh, let's say you're in the camp that you think they'll approve it and you think that could create more upward momentum. And I'm not saying you, you have to think that, but let's say that, that you're in that camp, which is the camp that many crypto traders have been in for weeks, uh, even months. So I start to see a support level somewhere in this area, okay? And it's a gray line. It's not, a, it's not always one exact spot. What I mean is you could find an area maybe up a little higher where there's some resistance. Like I see here, resistance 
resistance, resistance, resistance again here, and it's finding support here. But you see when it finds the support, it dips a little below and comes back above. And the resistance was here, but the support maybe is a little bit lower. So we start to find a zone where we say, okay, best guess is there's resistance up here and there's a lot of support in this price here. Okay, support, support, and we see support at that price here and back here. So somewhere in this area, there's a support where the price in the past has had trouble dropping below, and if it was already below, it's had trouble breaking above this zone, okay? Kind of a support resistance zone I've created here. So if I was buying, I probably would want my stop loss below these wicks, below this support level from the past where it's found support. But at some point, maybe you don't wanna risk too much, so you might not wanna get your stop loss all the way down below something like this, Maybe that's too far, but you know that's where trading again is more of an art than a science. Not everyone's going to put their stop loss at the same spot, but I'm trying to find a spot where I'm relatively certain that if this does turn into an uptrend, if there is positive momentum, that it maybe it won't break below this support level here. Okay, and it's above this old resistance, and maybe I think it'll hold. But I'm going to get my stop loss below that price level and this next one here. Okay. So if I'm buying on this, stop loss maybe is down here at just below 11.6. So maybe 11.590. Okay. So I get my stop loss here, just below that support level, maybe 11.585, just to make sure I'm below that. Okay, 11,585 for a stop loss. My take profit, maybe I'm just looking to scalp with, with a quick move on the momentum. Maybe I'm not looking at one day or one week candles, which you could be. I'm not saying you shouldn't do long-term trading, but this example is on the 30-minute candles. And maybe I'm just trying to catch this resistance level that it was already at yesterday or today. Okay, this resistance here, that it doesn't have to do much to get up there. Okay, so that's at 12,097 or maybe 12,100. So maybe I put my take profit at 12,100 as an example. So my potential profit is around 1,200. My risk is around 840, okay? If I like that risk reward stratification, now I just need to change my trade size to fit how much I'm willing to risk and what I want my potential profit to be. Okay, so I use the technical analysis to see that I think I have an opportunistic entry point here, less risk, more potential profit, which again, doesn't have to be the way you set up. You could put your stop loss further away than your take profit. Uh, each trader has their own style. I tend to like to try and within my checklist, find an opportunistic entry point in the direction that I wanted to trade. Meaning if I'm buying, I'm hoping I'm catching it after a pullback and it's starting to bounce off of a support level, that sort of thing. But it doesn't always have to be the case. Some strategies are breakthrough strategies and you're waiting for it to break through a resistance and, and you're buying at a high point. That can be okay too, all right? Uh, but in this case, I've got an opportunistic entry point. It seems to be bouncing off this support level, at least for now. Uh, crypto trading, there could be big movements in small periods of time. So I'm going to use a stop loss uh, that's not too far away so that I don't get caught a big spike down that's way down and then it comes back up and I take a bigger loss than I wanted. So uh, I've got my setup the way I think it makes sense for this from a technical perspective. Now I just need to lower my trade size a little if I want to risk, say, 500 per trade. So I uh, 3.25 gets me about there, I think. Yeah, right around 500 to go after near 800 profit. Okay, and then there I am. I'm off and running. And the cryptocurrencies tend to have a little bit bigger spread uh, than, than the standard currencies. So you'll see it starts in the negative a bit, uh, but you have to manage that with your entry point and your stop loss, okay, and your take profit. And if anyone has any questions as we're going, uh, feel feel free to, to post those questions in the chat box. 
Uh, Yulia, everyone can see different spots for support and resistance. There are different levels of support that are on this chart. You could find multiple spots. I, I could draw a, another line of support that was here. Okay, you see this wick came down and bounced up. Then the next support was found here where I drew this one. Then it went up and the next support was found here where I drew that line. So it's like a staircase. There are different levels of support and resistance. They go up stepwise, forming different uh, price levels of support and resistance. Uh, why didn't I use one that's further down? Because I wanted to go after a larger potential profit. If I used a stop loss that was further down, then to risk 500, still, I would have had to take a much smaller trade size. Then my potential profit would have been less. So uh, it's risk and reward, okay? And so I'm willing to have my stop loss closer and take a little larger trade rather than putting my stop loss further down and taking a smaller trade. And, and that's all part of sticking to a risk management plan. Whereas if my stop loss was further away, I would have taken a smaller trade because I still only want to risk maybe 500 per trade or whatever that amount is for you, okay? Uh, so this is the setup that I saw. It's not the only setup I see. If I was doing a longer term trade, then I certainly would have had my stop loss probably down below this wick, below this support level, or even below this one, further stop loss away, and I would have been looking at one day candles, looking at my take profit up much higher as well for a longer term move, okay? And in that case, I probably would have taken a smaller trade because my stop loss would be further away, but also so too would my take profit. So I could still go after a large profit even with a smaller trade, okay? Very good question. Uh, okay, so I think this is a good place to stop. We've gone through some different instrument classes, uh, a few different ideas with technical analysis and trading. Uh, and again, with this crypto trade, it's a checklist, right? The fundamental news seems to be on its side. There's been a lot of positive sentiment, thinking that this ETF uh, rule in the U.S. will be passed for, for Bitcoin ETFs. That's been bullish for, for the crypto 10. Uh, we'll see what happens with that, by the way, tomorrow or, or whenever, whenever they decide uh, on, on approving or not the, the trading of these ETFs with Bitcoin. Uh, but that, that's kind of in the favor. Then the technical analysis was opportunistic, like I like to see. Uh, the, there isn't a signal on this one, so I can't say the signal is on our side, but the USD has been weakening in general today, and this is paired against the USD. So there are several things that look to be in the favor of this being able to maybe bounce back up to this resistance level up here. Without even having to break the resistance, I've got an opportunistic entry point where as long as it doesn't break two support levels, two support levels in my favor, it would have to break both of them to hit my stop loss. As long as it doesn't break both of those, it doesn't even have to break this resistance level to hit my take profit. So multiple layers uh, within my strategy say, this might make sense to buy, okay? And so this is how I'm going through robotically, thinking about the sentiment, thinking about uh, is there a signal in my favor? Is it an opportunistic entry point from a technical analysis perspective? And if all of those things align in your mind, then it makes sense to make that trade, okay? And if you thought the sentiment was, no, 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 it's negative for crypto right now, then you wouldn't make this move because you'd have conflicting uh, information in terms of your checklist, okay? And that's for each trader to determine uh, what all should be on your checklist. And I've named a few ideas uh, in this session. And then for you to decide, you know, does everything on that checklist uh, align or not to make this move? Or maybe you want three out of the four things on your checklist to align in order to make the move. Doesn't have to necessarily be everything. Okay. All right, everybody. I think this is a good place to stop. Good luck with your trading. Uh, the rest of this week, especially with the, the ETF decision maybe coming tomorrow or, or sometime this week. And uh, in terms of Bitcoin uh, ETFs out of the U.S. And then also a lot of data coming with inflationary data that really could move the markets. All right, everybody, good luck with the trading. Until next time, bye for now.